I used to be really shy and for me, it was like every time I would mess around and perform a song for my mum in the living room, like, you know, the Usher songs where like he's dancing in the rain. I would do all of that stuff. And although I was shy, it was like in those moments, like there was a sense of confidence and in those moments, it was a, a sense of exploration. And as I got older enough to understand the differences in myself, um, I wanted to find more about this confident me. I wanted to, I wanted to see how far I can take it and, and how can I get more of this, of this fun side out. So after you went to America, uh -huh. you came back because you finished, you finished brief at college now. Yeah. So you did a feature film? Yes, um, I came back and I think this was around October, November. Mm. Um, I auditioned for Anybody Gets It and mm. that was with MFT Media. Mm. Um, and it was amazing because it's an all-female um, production company, firstly, and it's all black yeah. females. So yeah. um, that in itself was definitely inspiring and just empowering to be around yeah. and anybody gets it um I guess the a way to explain what the film was kind of like is mm. if you imagine uh, the voice of big brother who kind of oversees everything mm. and it was these four characters from each side of London so north east south west yeah. and um, we had all entered a competition on twitter oh, and okay. this game was asking us a series of questions because mm. we had entered it yeah. and it takes a twist but I don't want to spoil it because um, I think it's coming out at some point this year. So, oh, uh, where's it? What, we, what, what will it be dropping on? Um, I'm actually not too sure what they're bringing it out on. Okay. Um, but I will be putting that information up on my social media. Um, when, when I do know. Okay. Cool. Um. So yeah. So I did that, and then um, I also did another project, um, called Benny's World. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a comedy, it's mm. a comedy that's coming out um, April twentieth. Okay. So yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Got that coming out as well. So that's those two. Um, oh, and the Jaden Kesler show. Yes. I worked on that yeah, at yeah, the yeah, latter yeah. part during the year as well. So how did that come about? Because I I saw like the post and I was like, okay, this is interesting. So like, how did you create the show? What was the idea behind the show? Um. So I had met Kezra. Um, Kojo from the Colour Network had a premiere. I think it was for um, a, a film called um, Boys and Girls, something like that. Mm. And um, I had happened to meet Kezra there. She, um, I was wearing earrings. And she was like, oh, where are your earrings from? And we connected. Mm. And uh, we spoke about having representation on screen and mm. how... Um, we didn't necessarily always see versions of ourselves yeah. on screen. And when you see versions of um, black females normally on London TV, mm. it's very urbanised. Yeah. And um, myself, I feel like I don't necessarily fit into that category, neither mm. does Kezra. And so we started thinking, so what about the people who are a little bit quirky and who aren't necessarily your typical London urban? Mm. Where is that representation? Um, and Kezra is a writer and yeah. she's an amazing writer. Mm. So she, we were talking, we were like, why don't we just, why don't we just build our own opportunities? Let's stop waiting and yeah. let's just do it. So this is when I was in my final year at drama school, me and Kezra would be on the phone for hours, just talking about little scenarios mm. and she would be writing it up. So we co-created it together and then mm. Kezra went away and wrote up the episodes oh, nice. and then I casted it, I produced, Kezra produced it. Mm. Um, and it was literally because we're very together, we just, we just get up to the most randomest things and we're silly and it, it's just, we wanted to show that side. Yeah. So the Jade and Kezra show is a comedy drama and Jade and Kezra are our best friends. So it isn't based on us. These are the Jade and Kezra mm. characters and um, they're best friends and Kezra is your hardworking kind of businesswoman and um, mm. very serious, like classy, you know, follows the rules. Mm. And Jay's character is very free and about the universe and um, she doesn't want to be tied into any constraints of society. Yeah. Um, what we find out in season one is actually um, Jay doesn't have money to pay the rent, but she's been telling a lie to Kezra that her family are rich, but she doesn't 
she doesn't want to be associated with that money. Mm. Um, so so she lies and this big thing comes out and her mum gets introduced, which is played by Catherine O'Reilly, another amazing actress. Mm. Um, and so although it's a comedy, there's layers within it where we see um, real struggles that our yeah. characters go through and tests of friendship and relationships and um, status in mm. some situations. Um, and a big part of it also is building a multi-cultural cast. Yeah. Um, we want to have something that's literally, absolutely representing two black female leads. Mm. But we also want to have a cast that has people where if someone's watching it, they can identify with at least one person yeah. on the screen. So, um, yeah, hopefully... The trailer's out now. Mm. So hopefully you see glimpses of that in the trailer. Yeah. And then um, we're going to film the whole of season one the season one trailer's out. We're yeah. filming the whole of season one in April and May before I leave. Yeah. And then when I come back, get ready for season two. And Kez was just writing and just got loads of great ideas. No, fair enough. So it's exciting. Oh, one, two. I've arrived. <laughs> oh, so what, no butler? It's not very Belair of you, is it? This is hamster due to it, not Belair. What's going on? What's she doing here? We had an agreement, Constantina. No. You had an agreement, and I'm done with it. You can keep your money too, yeah? And it's Jade. No, now, Jade. Let's not be so hasty. <laughs> what? You cannot be throwing away good money, Jade. And clearly your mother knows what's best for the both of us. What were you talking about? Come on and take this. Long hair. <laughs> I could be your daughter. Kesra, come on, stop being a weirdo. Uh, talk to me. Kesra, I'm coming. Oh. Oh, <sighs> Give me strength. How do you sort of like cast for that? Because I know you're quite busy in your final year. Yeah. So how do you um, find sort of cast? I. <laughs> I literally, um, I juggled, it was hard, I juggled a lot because I, I had rehearsals at drama school mm. and then you would have extra work to do and essays, but um, I just, I didn't stop. I, I, would, I would cram as much as I could into the day and yeah. um, I'd make sure I had all my schoolwork done, absolutely, but as soon as that was done, um, the quickest way of me working was me going to people who I knew were mm. reliable and who I knew... Um, people who I knew kind of a bit about in terms of their work history and how they work with other people. Mm. Um, and over my years of just working with J Films and um, produce, um, production assistant on yeah. Water Comedy, New School Life and stuff like that, I've mm. really built up kind of a logbook for myself of performers and, and writers yeah. and, and directors yeah. that I can call on. So in that situation, it wasn't as hard for me because automatically I kind of knew who I wanted and along the way I, I met certain people who fell in line with the roles that yeah. were um, available. Okay, cool. So you also, I think, is this your first production do I think you're producing like from scratch or is it like one of one of um, you've done? No, I've done another one. Um, this was years ago. Um, this was the first production company I ever worked with yeah. and they mainly specialised in um, Nollywood okay. um, films. They were called J Films, the okay. production company, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, we, the right, the guy in charge of the company was Jay, mm. and we wrote a film together. It's never too late. Produced it, cast it, and um, it got presented at BAFTA. I got to host it at BAFTA. Oh no! Nice. Yeah, um, and I still have like pictures from that night, and um, we had some great people in it, um, and yeah, so I got to do that, and then obviously I went away to drama school and really honed in on my craft because I'm not there yet, yeah. and I feel like. Training is important for me to really tidy up the areas and yeah. delving into projects of my own and collaborating is important because, mm. yeah, it's just tying it all together. Yeah, I hear that. So with the Jade and Kezra characters, you're both called Jade and Kezra. So how did, like, in terms of the characters themselves, like, do you feel like they're parts of you in terms of like you're given a certain element to the to the comedy show or is it completely um, different areas and you're able to sort of blend or split them down the middle? So Kezra could probably give you a more specific answer than I could on that one. But mm. the way I view them is, um, I guess Jade and Kezra is um, 
it's like the the foundation our outer shell of us mm. um but it's none of it's none of our inner qualities and mm. our inner personalities um if if you if you like Jade, the character of Jade is just using my my body and my face, mm. um, and that you know that that name of mine is Jade, mm. and same as Kezra. Um, so it's just us put in a completely different um, scenario situation, mm. um, and yeah, in a different realm, I guess, and heightened yeah. in that realm. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to seeing. I'll watch the trailer, and I'm looking forward to like seeing the show. When Thank it, when it comes you. Out. Thank you. It, it's been um, it's it's been fun to film. And we've literally done it on practically a zero budget and managed to find locations, edit, shoot it, get our actors. So How do you do it? Because I've, I've always been intrigued when someone says a zero budget film because I'm mm. always like, okay, so how did you get... Because aren't there a lot of things you have to work around, like maybe you need the permit or maybe you need to like pick the time of day you would go to a certain spot yeah so how do you sort of work around like having almost zero budget um it was it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done especially with the Jaden Kezra show yeah. um but what I first started to do was again go back to what I've been building from the get-go was yeah. um was a foundation of of people who oh. I knew were reliable and good and so um, I sent them the script um, yeah. and the people who I spoke with, I explained to them, um, this is a script. I, there is no budget, but um, I would love you on board. And if you are interested, come along. And they believed it in it enough to say, hey, listen, it's, it's OK if there isn't any expenses. Obviously, we provided lunch mm. and travel expenses if it was very far for you to travel. Mm. But um, the nice thing is they were there because they wanted to be there. Yeah. And they were there because they genuinely believed mm. that this this holds weight this this can be good it has potential so um with that like the camera man and the dop when it came down to it they was like it, it's okay like do you know what i mean they did mm. it for free because they believed in it and i think when you have a team of people that are solely all in it for the same reason not for profit not yeah. because oh, i'm here because i'm being paid yeah. it's because I genuinely believe in it, it's good. Yeah. Like it kind of, everyone who came on board, it was like a ripple effect. Mm. It was just like, when, you know, when you see, you go into something and you see that there's a foundation there, it's mm. easier to get people to yeah. to come on. Yeah. Um, so it kind of worked like that in a sense. That's and cool. yeah, people believed in it. So they jumped in and we did what we could with little bits of change. But yeah, for a zero budget, I'm, I'm happy with how it came out. I'm intrigued to see it now. I'm really intrigued to see it now. Thank you. So, you said that you'll come when you come back. There'll be a season two and stuff. Mm -hmm. But we were speaking downstairs about when you would potentially come back and stuff. Um, yes. So in terms of like, so you say last year you mm -hmm. wanted to like have different challenges and first say you faced your challenges and sort of oh absolutely. Grew. <laughs> but this year you're going to America and obviously from that point on it's a bit unsure. So yeah. What's sort of the plan for the rest of the year? So the plan for the rest of the year is um, I go to America and I go work um, in the role as team director for yeah. the San Francisco Boys and Girls Club at um, camp. Yeah. And then after that, um, we're going to go traveling because I very much enjoy work. And when I delve into work and when I'm in work mode, I work absolutely hard. Mm. But I also believe everything within balance and rest. Yeah. Um, so after after the job we're going to go traveling and camp at the Grand Canyon Ooh, um just yeah, just something new just um I think going away changes you and it, it does, challenges yeah. you yeah. so after that I'm going to do that and then we're going to go to Shendu um and there's there's like a theater community in Shendu and um you can also teach English in Shendu and I have my degree from drama school as well so um we're in the process of getting a Chinese visa me and my friend Shanice that I'm going yeah. with and um, we're going to look to potentially work out there for a little bit. And the reason why we haven't chosen a return flight is, uh, Shanice said this to me. She said, if we pick a flight back home, then we've already set ourselves up to fail because we've given ourselves a specific time scale mm. in when to be there. And if we go there and we don't, it means we're more op open to opportunities. Yeah. Um, say if, if a job came up and it was for four weeks, but our flight leaves in two weeks, it's 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 a block it's a barrier yeah. so um we really want to put ourselves in a position to be as open to opportunities as possible and you yeah. know it may not even be that long but yeah. i think it's important just to 
leave it open-ended to really be able to grasp any opportunity that comes. I hear you on that, but that's scary, no? It is. It, it's very terrifying. Um, but at the same time, it's like every time that I go away, every time that I travel, like it's a new insight on, on life and on mm. the world and on people. And like I say, these things come full circle and everything, things that I take from me from traveling really do feed back into the yeah. acting work. So it's it's all important and it's needed. And yes, work hard, but yes, also rest and really mm. find yourself within that and just explore life. Like life is so much more than London. Life yeah. is so much more than these four walls. And when you go out and when you're in different cultures, you really do realize that. Yeah. I hear you. I wish you the best of that. I hope that goes goes to plan. Thank you. Final question. So when we last spoke, we talked about you were talking about a project that you were doing for the Black Art Movement and like yes. the Black community. So how do you believe you could help the Black Arts Movement in the UK? Because a lot's happened in the last like twelve months since we last spoke with like Black Panther and Get Out and yeah, like, John Boyega and Star Wars and stuff. So like, how do you feel? Like, it can be improved in that sense, or it can be capitalised on? I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say capitalise. I would say that awareness, like, in the last few years, like, I've really felt a shift in terms of black consciousness. Yeah. And there's been such a, a proudness in it. And that has come with films like Black Panther and Get Out. Like, I remember it was my final year of drama school, and, like, all the second and first years got dressed up and went to the cinema to watch it. Mm. And you know, in dashikis and head wraps. And it was a real event to go yeah. with your friends who are who are BAME or who are black or and just go and experience this film where it was like every every black person or every person that looked like you had a strong lead. Yeah. And that is so rare to see. So it, it was such a turning point moment. And with that, there's come this shift, but um I look at it as a struggle between this this awakening shift of black consciousness, but also social media and some of the the grading things you see on there. It, yeah. there, it can really kind of shift you into yeah. being, uh, I really want to feel powerful, but also I feel Excellent. like I have to yeah. be like this. And for me, I really just want to, I've been talking to lounge academics about mm. maybe doing an event with them. Um, and it, it's with black creatives mm. and really... Um, empowering them and bringing people from di all different stages of yeah. specific um, career paths and really speaking about their journeys and um, I guess their histories and what they've been through um, and in informing them mm. because I feel like a lot of people like myself aren't always informed in everything and that's where we lose out you know I've met so many people black performers and black creatives who are yeah. like, uh, they would love to know about black theatre companies or they would love to know about black owned production companies. Yeah. And there isn't enough people informing them. So if I know with the pool of people that I know as performers and actors and creatives, if I know I can all get them in one room yeah. and also bring really influential people from different stages around to inform and empower a group of people, even if it only empowers 10 when they leave, I just mm. feel like, I've I've done something. I've I've made a difference. That's more than just being on screen and performing. And yeah, that's important to me. Mm -hmm.